Well, fellow guitar geeks, there is a brand new, affordable entry level amplifier series on the market. It's the ID Core V3 from Blackstar. And in this video, I'm going to get some sounds from it. I'm going to run through the features. And at the end, I'll give you my review. So uh, without further ado, let's do it. I do. do. <laughs> The amp is relatively small, so it's not tiny, but it's not big. It's about roughly the size of a large toaster, and hopefully it doesn't sound like one. But this is the 20 watt version. There are three flavors in this series. The 10 watt, which has 10 watts, and two three inch speakers. This is the 20, it's got 20 watts, and two five inch speakers. And there's also the 40 watt model, which has two six and a half inch speakers. That's the big daddy, the big brother. And um, I've gone for the one in the middle because I thought that would retain some of the, the 10 wattness and a bit of the 40 watts. So smack bang in the middle of the range, that's what you get today. There's the control panel, it's very, very simple. We've got six voices or six like amp channels. We've got the gain of that amp channel and the volume of the amp channel and the EQ of that voice or amp channel, which is actually the ISF, the infinite uh, shaping feature from Blackstar, giving us somewhere between a warmer Marshall tone and a cleaner, crispier, uh, fendery tone. Over here is the effects section. We've got reverb, four different types, delay, four different types, and modulation, four different types. Uh, and then we've got, this is the way to cycle through them. So I'll show you that just in a moment. There's the level of the effects and everything. The first thing to do, of course, is to get some sounds from the amp. So I'm going to run through each of the six voices with something appropriate, I hope. So firstly, we've got the first voice, which is the clean warm. <laughs> Next up, the clean bright. Little bit of crunchiness from the crunch voice. When crunch is just not enough, there's always super crunch. As we cycle through the voices, they become more high gain, more metally. So the first of those really metal channels is called the OD-1. It's just here, but due to my camera angle, you can't see it. So if I, if I were to tip it forward, it's just there, look. There's OD-1 and OD-2 at the back. The final voice in the amp is the OD2. You really can't see that in the close up because it's right up behind the little knob. Sorry. There's actually much more. Whoa, OD1 actually sounds a little bit like that as well. So if I just flip it back without changing this. I've been with this amp for about a day now, playing on and off, and right at the beginning when I first plugged it in, it did not sound good, because um, it just sounded like horribly toppy and rattly and, and wobbly and everything. It turns out that after playing it for about a day, you know, for about four or five hours, it has worn in and the speakers have broken in. It tends to, it's, it's given up. I've, I've, I've tamed it a little. So if you do get one, be aware that when you get it out of the box, it might sound a little bit crap. I think the speakers need to break in quite a bit. So at least two hours of play. I had it for about four or five hours of playing and worrying that I wasn't gonna be able to give this a positive review. Um, so far, it's not a perfect sounding amp, but it doesn't, Blackstar are not trying to market it as a real amp. They're very much saying it's for practice and for a little bit of recording uh, and for live streaming, which we'll go into in this video a little bit, we'll, we'll touch on it. Um, let's go and see the effects and see what they're doing. All the way over here is uh, the three effects buttons. We've got reverb, which I had for all those uh, different voice demonstrations, the delay and modulation. There are four different types of reverb, there are four different types of delay, and there are four different types of modulation. Now the type can be changed by twisting this knob 
Uh, we're on type one at the moment. And as we bring it round to there, can I do it without covering the lights? Not really. Yes. There, that light goes off and you can't see that light. Well done, Andy. There's number three and there's number four. So taking three, for example, there's three. And then as I push it back there, there's four. And then there's more of four. And then here's the level of that effect compared to um, your dry signal. So let's take it back to number one and hit you with the reverbs. I'm going to go maxing out on the level just to show you what they sound like. My favorite channel right now is Clean Bright. Um, but with the gain about there and the volume uh, level about there. Oh yeah, there's a tuner built in, which is quite genius. If I hold this reverb button down, this little green light flashes up here, which tells me I'm in tuner mode. These three knobs tell me uh, if it's in tune, if it's sharp, or if it's flat. So there's my top E. If I go too sharp, it, it goes there. Press that reverb again to come out of the tuner mode. The green light goes off, so the amp's working again. We're on um, reverb number one. Level, I'll put it about three quarters, actually. Stick the ISF about there. Uh, gain, I'm going to put about quarter and that about up a bit. And we're on um, between the middle pickup and the neck pickup. Let's try reverb number one, uh, number two, sorry. So the reverbs are getting bigger. There's reverb number three. And then reverb number four, the biggest of the reverbs, I may add. So the reverbs seem to get bigger as you go up through the dial. And number one was a, uh, a room, and then we have a little hall, then a, a spring, then a massive plate, which sounds gorgeous. And you can get some really nice sort of ambient stuff. Still there. You might notice there's quite a bit of a hiss as well going on. I don't know if there, if that is the amp or indeed my setup, but I know there's a noise gate built in somewhere. I think I have to check the software for that. Let's turn the reverbs off and go over to delays, and the same happens just here. So bear in mind this is a stereo amp, and I've got a stereo mic just here. So you're going to be hearing this hopefully in stereo. Up first is the linear delay. You might notice this madly flashing red light. It's the tap tempo. So um, let's calm that down a little bit. They're getting more feedback. So in the middle should be about a rough halfway of feedback. So how many repeats you get. So this is an analog delay. So this is the tape delay, and I've just realized that you need to change the level every time you change one of these because it's actually saved as a preset. It's a long one. Then we got a four, which is a multi delay. So I'm guessing if I do that, it's going to go on forever.
gets kind of crunchy when you're up that uh, that top end. That's that's weird. So plenty of delay effects on tap. Um, let's go for the modulations. There are four modulation effects. The first one is phaser. Reverbs are off. It's just this phaser and the clean bright channel. <laughs> That's nice. Let's see if I can make it laugh about. Alrighty. Uh, next up is the flanger stroke chorus. I'm not a massive fan of chorus yet. So let's put that somewhere sensible. ISF. Let's mess with that. I don't know how to use chorus. It is lovely and warbly, though. Then we've got a, an envelope. So let's get some funk on. There's no tap on that, it's just as it is. Let's get the level down. That's nice. That's a nice little funk. Tremolo. So the tap comes back into play here. Let's uh, max that out. That's all the effects. Whoo! That is um that's a lot. So even though the amp seems quite basic in looks and in features, it actually has quite a lot of sounds on board. And I really like the marketing that Blackstar have said that it's um what did they say? Hang on, let me just just check it out. Guitarist friendly controls combined with the power of programmability for an amazingly versatile tonal range from pristine clean to high gain. Now, I'm having issues with the amp flubbing out on those low notes. And indeed, if I got a high gain, high gain, come on, you beast. If I play like this, there's actually air coming out of these two holes and of the jack socket. I don't know if this is going to work, but that's a piece of clear plastic that wrapped the, the power cable in. That's not the vibration of the amp, that is air coming through those two sockets. So. It's not ported, I think, at the back. I must be ported here at the front somewhere. So I'll take a look at that at sometime in the future. But um, there's air coming out of the sockets. That's um, that's strange. The amp is not pretending to be something it isn't. And Blackstar are not marketing it like that. So if anyone says that it doesn't sound like a real amp or there's no way you could gig with that, that's true. <laughs> but it's also not what it's for. I don't know if it has a place in the market yet because there's so much... Um, in that sort of home practice range, such as some of the Fender stuff, some of the Boss stuff, the Spark, um, all those sort of things. But um, this one has some features that other ones don't. Let's talk about those. 
This is a TRRS cable, so you've, rather than normal headphone, which is tip ring sleeve, this is tip ring ring sleeve, meaning you've got one more connection. And this enables you to connect the amp to your smartphone or, or probably tablet as well, and play music from, say, GarageBand to um, the amp and also to Instagram. So you can live stream with the amp using a TRRS cable, which Blackstar are bringing out. This is a, a bog standard standard cable, but Blackstar are bringing out a, a branded one, I guess. I will go into the live streaming stuff in another video because that's a whole new world of um, possibility. And that's what I'm really excited about, about this amp. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do so now because I will be back with more info on this amp regarding the live streaming element. Looking at the Blackstar website, there are 14 icons, which are their major features they're pushing for this amp. And the first one is the wattage. So you've got a maximum of 40 watts. This is the 20. Enhanced voices, which is the amp channels. So it's got some, some amp channels. Uh, 12 effects, we, we've heard all those today. It's a recording interface. Now this is a bone of contention. Let's look at the amp. I will be going over the USB capabilities in another video, but take a look at that. And you've probably been looking at it for the whole video. That's a mini USB socket. It is 2021 and Blackstar have put a mini USB socket on there when it should be at least micro and hopefully USB-C. That is the current um, technological capability. So I don't know why they've gone with that because personally, I donated most of my mini USB cables years ago. And even though this is a demo version, I didn't get a USB cable with the amp. So um, maybe you will if you buy it. And if, if so, I will put some comment down below in the video description to correct me, but I didn't get a cable with this for USB capabilities. Mini USB is of the past. That should not be mini USB. Check out the video on my channel of the USB capabilities of this amp coming very soon or indeed is live already. Super wide stereo. It is very nice. And I've put that mic there so you can hear it best. But when I had my head there earlier, when I was checking out the sounds and listening to it, it does really fill the room. Next thing they're pushing in the marketing is the ISF infinite shape feature. And it's actually really versatile. What I will say is it sounds wrong on some channels. So on the clean bright, it, did, it sounded woolly if you put it too much near the Fender side, actually. So that was odd. Um, or I should say American side. I'm not sure. But what I'm trying to say is that each voice amp channel, um, you need to tweak with the ISF to really get it its best. The cab rig, I'm not gonna go into that in this video. That's, that requires me to plug that into my computer, which I, I don't wanna do today. And I wanna follow that up with a proper, can you really record with this amp video? So that'll be coming soon, or indeed is live if I'm pointing at a, a card up there. Doesn't have Bluetooth, but it has a stereo line in so you can play things into it from your phone or something. Okay, most amps have Bluetooth these days. This one doesn't. Guess that means we don't have to have an app, which I don't like apps and, and amps. Um, I quite like software and amps, so that's okay. But this one, no Bluetooth, does have a line in. Patches, it has patches. I will go into that in another video again. That'll be the deep dive thing, which brings me to the next point. It's called deep editing software. They've got this new software called Architect, which looks very pretty, um, works on the new Mac M1 Silicon Mac, which is great, because that's what I've just purchased. And again, coming in the next video. This is the PB1 which sounds like peanut butter one, but it is a power bank with a torch in it. Hang on. There we go, with a torch in it. That will power that amp, making this amp battery powered. It'll also charge your phone. Turn off. There we go. And um, that is also coming in, in, in another video. You know, I'm just preparing you for the future of me and the Blackstar ID Core V3 Stereo 20. Uh, I'm gonna do stuff with that amp. That didn't sound right. Got a built-in tuner. I really like the tuner. Um, boss, pay attention. It is possible to put a tuner in an amp with lights on it. You've got amps in your katanas. Do it, please. Thank you. And finally, Blackstar are offering guitar tuition online. I don't know if it's free. I don't know if it's paid. I don't know if it's any good, but it is there. You should get at least a free month with this amp though. I'll ask. I'll find out for the next video. So the review part, um, it's got lots of features going on. It's small, it's compact, it's very light. And if I just turn it off for a second, and then I put that right into the back, we can spin that around and you can see, ooh, 
that there's really nothing going on behind the amp. It's uh, a power in, there we go, and some kind of chip or MDF there, and then a carrying handle. But the amp is extremely light. So that's a 20 watt amp, which I don't know, it, it does flub out on this clean channel. So you're not gonna get a very loud, clean amp, but uh, it's quite light. The 40, of course, will be heavier, 10 will be lighter. Um, I'd be very happy to play with that in a, in a small acoustic sort of setting band or rehearsal. It probably wouldn't be my first rehearsal choice. I think the 20 watt is not enough. Um, I really do. I, I, I almost don't want to try the 10. I think the 40 is necessary. However, when you plug it into the recording software and, and plug that into your computer, it's all going to sound the same, I guess, because it's the same amp when, you know, it's all the same when the lights are out. But um, yeah, I don't think the 20 is the one I'd go for. Normally, I do always go for the one in the middle. Not today. Um, I can't recommend the 40 because I haven't played it. But right now, I cannot wholly recommend the 20. If any of the features grabbed you, like the stereo field, for example, if that came across in the video, then um, by all means, try one out. But right now, that flubbiness in the low end and, and the cab sort of, it, something's resonating, something's flubbing <laughs> on those low notes. I will be back with this amp in future videos. I will take it out on the streets and do all kinds of wonderful things with it. In the meantime, thank you, Blackstar, for sending the amp. Thank you to you for watching. You've made it to the end of the video, so you're in the end of the video club. Please leave me in, in, in the comments, when you go down there and you leave me a comment, leave me the phrase, Blackstar define ISF as infinite shape feature. Come up with something else that could also mean ISF, like integrated spaceship flange. Thank you for watching. I will see you in one of these videos, either in the future or in the past, if time travel has been invented by the time you watch this, which if it hasn't, then come on, scientists, pull your finger out. And um, thanks to Blackstar for sending this again. Bye.